And for me, my journey, my interest in this was, where does the Muslims fit in the story of mental health? Because we have so many taboos and stigmas in our community about this topic. Is there a connection at all? As I was reading, one of the texts that I came across was a lesser known scholar from the ninth century. He's somebody that I didn't really know anything about, or it's not a name that you would recognize right away, like some of the famous scholars or physicians of our Muslim heritage. As I was reading his books, I was really struck. Each of the chapters in which he was writing, it seemed to me as someone who was newly trained as a psychiatrist, was talking about depression, anxiety, even obsessive compulsive disorder, what we would call OCD. It blew me away. Because what we had studied in school and in my training program at the most prestigious universities said that illnesses like OCD were modern illnesses, only discovered in the 19th century, fully classified and diagnosed. And they were only conditions that were found in Europe, typically by white psychologists. But here I was reading a text from the 19th, from the 9th century, not the 19th century, a millennium earlier. And what I saw there really struck me. Down the hall from my office was the preeminent scholar on OCD in the country. He was at Stanford. And the person who wrote all the textbooks on this topic. I finally mustered enough courage <laughs> to walk down the hall and knock on his door. And I said, I think I found something here that shows that OCD is actually discovered much earlier than what's written in the books and that we study in our programs. And he said, no, 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 no. Very nice guy, but he said, I'm a history buff. And he starts pulling off papers that he published from his shelf. He said, here are the Romans, and here are the Greeks, and here's this, and here's this. There is no evidence that this was discovered prior. And I said to him, what now was the famous question, but can you read in Arabic? And he said, no. Can you? I said, yes. And he did what every professor does. Fine. Go translate it and come back. <laughs> I said, OK. Sat down and diligently translated that chapter and came back and presented it to him side by side. The criteria we today use as psychiatrists in the DSM are manual for diagnosis. And Al-Balkhi, this is the name of the scholar from the ninth century, Abu Zayd Al-Balkhi, his criteria that he used. And when you look what's now published in the paper, line by line by line by line, he had figured out the correct classification, diagnosis, and treatment for this illness in the ninth century. This professor, who otherwise was kind of hand-waving, started jumping, jumping in <laughs> my office, jumping. And he said to me, you must publish. I wasn't thinking of publishing. This was a personal journey, personal reading. And so we did. You could read it today in the Journal of Affective Disorders. And we then published another paper on Belchi and his discovery of phobias and his correct treatment of it. Oh, kama qal dawa either an illness, if for an illness, either a cure or a treatment. And that matches, matches modern medicine, where some things we have treatments and some things we have cures. SubhanAllah, it doesn't stop there. That then led to a long discovery, and in fact, the creation of my lab at Stanford called the Muslim Mental Health and Islamic Psychology Lab. The first of its like in the country, alhamdulillah, maybe the world.